you can build any vector at a given point in terms of a, a linear combination of rho hat, theta hat, phi hat. They're just like x, y, z hat. And of course, you could try to understand this geometrically, right? You could try to like, well, I'm going to draw a picture and take a point out here, right? And I know that rho hat points out like that. And I know that like theta hat points in the direction of increasing that. And I, I know that phi hat points down, right? And if you're a really good artist, you probably could start to see some of these formulas from such a picture. But I just kind of like the fact that we can just work it out by differentiating and normalizing and having an understanding of what the gradient vector means as it applies to level functions. Yeah? Also, these are good exercises for us because this is a little bit harder differentiation than we've faced in my typical made up polynomial examples, right? It's good to face these things together as opposed to homework alone on the first time. Yeah. Give me a moment here, make sure I'm not forgetting something. So I have pictures, right? I have pictures of these things in my in my notes. I showed you them before, right? But now I've showed you how to how to derive. You remember these? It's like on page 183. You know these things. I don't. I don't want to. I could bring this projector down, but we saw them before. Page 183. Okay. After all of this, <clears throat> that's great. So we've got partial deriv derivatives. We understand what they mean, you know, in terms of specific functions and, and uh, rates of change of functions. But there, there's a larger question, which is, what did I mean that day I said differentiable? You know, what, what do we mean for a function to be differentiable when it's a function of several variables? So. <clears throat> I'm about to show you is the so-called topic. I mean, well, so-called. It's a topic. It's called general general theory of differentiation. It's not in your book. Um, so let me just let me get started on it, and I, I probably need another 20 minutes next class to really flesh it out. So this time I'm just going to show you some some examples of it. Okay, and I'm, I'm going to just. Lay, lay down the law here without really much justification. I'm just showing you how it works, OK? Suppose you've got a function. And it's a function not, not from just R2 to R3, but it's a function, say, from, from, from Rn to Rm. So what that would mean is that it's a, you know, after this is a function of x1, x2, xn. So there's n variables in the domain. And uh, f itself has component functions, f1, f2, da da da, f, fm. Now, the, the component functions are kind of what we've been studying so far. We studied a function of x and y. We studied a function of x, y, and z. Those would be like the, the f sub 1 or the f sub 2. Turns out that, um, we say definition, is that f uh, is differentiable at, um, at a point p in the domain of f, let's say, if um, there exists some function L going from Rn to Rm such that, and here's the thing, the limit as h goes to 0 of f of p plus h, um, and I, I probably should put an h vector to emphasize that this is a vector, h vector, h vector. You could put a vector on the p if it makes you happy. It makes you happy. Let me put it there. There you go. Everything's vectors, 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 all around vectors. So f of p plus h minus f of p um, minus 
L of H. All divided by, and you see, I'd like to divide by H. That would be analogous to the first, you know, the ordinary uh, calculus derivative. But I can't do that because H is a vector. So instead of dividing by H, I divide by the norm, the length of H. Okay. So if, if this happens, if there is such a function L, okay, uh, you know, fine print here. L actually it's pretty it's pretty important print. L has to be a linear transformation. Um, so. Uh, linear transformation. That just means that it behaves like a derivative. It, it breaks up sums and you can pull out scalars. So if it's a linear transformation such that this limit goes to 0, then f is said to be differentiable at p. I mean, that's what it means for f to be differentiable at p, is that there is such a function as l that does this. This is called the Fréché quotient. And this is what's known as Fréché differentiability. In this case, if this exists, then we write L of H is equal to um, D sub P uh, F acting on H. So this is the so-called differential, differential of F at P acting on H. And you can also write this as F prime of p times h. That's a matrix multiplication. This f prime of p is a so-called Jacobian matrix. So what's this limit say? It says that you can approximate the change in the function What's the change? Change in the function would be f of, of, of p plus h minus f of p. That's the change in the function. That can be approximated by this linearization, provided that we're sufficiently close to the limit point. It's, it's, it's this linearization idea again. And um, <clears throat> so long story short, you can use the Jacobian matrix to build the best linear approximation to functions of several variables in the same way that you guys have built the best linear approximation to a tangent line using the velocity vector. Or the best linear approximation, well, we'll soon talk about the best linear approximation to a graph by the tangent plane. This includes all of those ideas at once. It's, it's the general viewpoint. So f prime, here's, the, here's what it looks like, though. f prime, the matrix is actually this. It's, it's partial f, partial x1, partial f, partial x2. Partial f, partial xn. This is the Jacobian matrix. For example, if I have f of x, y equal to, let's say, x squared minus y, xy, and 3x plus 7. So here, my, my function would be something like it's a mapping that takes in R2 and it spits out R3. We actually use functions like this later in the course. They're parameterizations of surfaces. But um, what's the Jacobian matrix for this? So I do partial f, partial x, and then partial f, partial y. So what is that? It's a, this is a what by what? It's a, it's a three by two matrix, three rows, two columns. By the way, I don't test too deeply on this part of the course because I know you guys haven't had linear algebra yet. So as, as much as I would love to really dig into it, I, I, I shouldn't go too far. I'm really just showing you this so you have a bigger picture of what we're doing. You can take it or leave it. If you want more of it, come take my advanced calculus course. I'll show you these things in more depth. Anyway, what is partial f, partial x? It's 2x. What's the next one, you guys? y, yeah. And 3. And then what? Minus 1, x, 0.
If I wanted to approximate this function near a point, I could use this matrix to come up with an approximation. For example, if I wanted to say f of x comma y, let's say, let's, what point do you guys want me to approximate at? Any point you want. Pick a point for me. You say, you say zero, zero, I kill you. What, what's that? Six, four. Six, four? OK. I'll take it. So what you do is you do f of 6, 4 plus f prime of 6, 4 times the column vector x minus 6, y minus 4. Look familiar? It's the tangent line. But it, this is more general. f of 6, 4 is what? It's Oh, why did you do that to me? 36 minus 4 is 32. 6 times 4 is 24. 3 times 6 is 18. 18 plus 7 is 25. Interesting. And then my matrix, oh, yeah, yeah, what are you doing to me? 12, 6, 3, minus 1, 6, 0, times the vector x minus 6, y minus 4. And so there you have it, 32 plus 12 times x minus 6 minus y minus 4, parentheses, 24 plus 6 times x minus 6, plus 6 times y minus 4, parentheses, and 25, plus 3 times x minus 6. This is the best linear approximation to this, this nonlinear function up here at that point 6, 4. So you just you calculate this matrix of derivatives, plug in the number, it gives you the best linearization, two functions from whatever space to whatever space you want, and that's how you do it. Just generalization of the notion of tangent line based on this being the fundamental definition. So when I said differentiable, I'm actually referring to this definition at the base of everything. This is typically beyond calculus three, but calculus three kind of assumes this stuff in the background. So anyway, I shut up. See you guys tomorrow.